right? So let us now look at the other thing, like attention span. How how important is the attention span of uh, students? So they said that the maximum uh, length of a lecture should be 18 minutes. Uh, that's the optimum. That's the optimum. But of course, for example, in the Philippines, we have some subjects uh, which lasts like how many? Uh, one hour sometimes. And in the college, we have uh, classes the three hours, five hours, especially if it is a major ship course, right? So let's talk about attention span. So the attention span, according to one post here coming from uh, from this source, no, this is this was a, po a post in 2010. Uh, John Stone and Percival observed uh, students on over 90 lectures given by 12 different lecturers, and they found out that... Uh, those lectures who, which were held or uh, delivered 10 to 18 minutes would uh, no, no, would would be optimal. By the end of the lecture, attention span became only three to four minutes long. So what does it mean? If your students, uh, even if uh, no matter how motivated they are, uh, their at attention span is quite short. So the, the most important details or the information that you want to, to convey or to uh, to tell them should be delivered on those on those uh, period of time so or in that period of time three to four minutes so yung ganun lang naman no? that's a basic consideration and uh, another I found also another study that supports the same thing but I think it's not only three to four minutes but eighteen you might observe that the TED talk you're familiar with TED talk right so most of their uh, most of their talks eighteen minutes only. Uh, seldom that it would uh, it would go beyond 20 minutes. Why? Because they are considering the attention span of viewers. And uh, let me just share to you this uh, this uh, study: uh, advances in physiological education. This is uh, or this was published right 2016. Okay, 2016. So the title: attention span during lectures eight seconds, ten or more. Right. And here are the findings. So the rule dictating, they mentioned 18 minutes is based on the notion that 18 minutes is long enough to have a serious presentation. Of course, because it's really hard to uh, deliver a lecture or a presentation, especially in science, that's very short, like five minutes, 10 minutes, but uh, some of our uh, teachers can do that. Uh, 18 minutes is long enough for you to have a serious presentation without... Uh, causing some detrimental effect on the attention span of the of the viewers. Aside from that, it is criticized that as being too long to hold students' attention based on several authors claims that a student's attention span declines precipitously after uh, 10 to 15 minutes. So after 15 minutes, wala na yan, no? So they are just uh, they are just uh, looking at you, they might be uh, they might seem listening but uh, I'm not sure what what what's on their mind though. No? Uh, when 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 uh, they just stay there because of course you are their teacher. But uh, in terms of the attention span, so this is what the uh, the research would say. Okay, so thus many authors would make the case that a lecture session should be, uh, last no more than ten to fifteen minutes. You can cut the session and uh, have some break and then uh, do another resume for another. Uh, uh, another part of the lecture. So yun ang pwede natin uh, gawin. Okay, so in line with this, you have to observe some health breaks, especially if the class is very long. Okay, so this is just a picture of a coffee. Not all students are advised to do that or to drink that. But uh, if there is a long synchronous session, then you can ask your students to take some health breaks. Yeah. So that, uh, that would be uh, that would be uh, for your benefit as well because you're talking five hours, three hours, what will happen? Uh, can you imagine yourself talking uh, uh, as long as three hours? Then you have three classes in a day or five, and then you're talking the entire year or for 10 months. What will happen to your um, larynx? So that's actually an abuse of your... Um, okay, so that's it. Now, so uh, these are some of the slides that I mentioned a while ago about... Uh, about some of the apps that you can use for uh, anonym, uh, anonymized uh, response of your students. So you can actually use this. This is a v, uh, Vivo, okay, Vivo, which is an online poll. And uh, when you use that, uh, you just have to key in the question and all of those options. And then uh, you will have this summary like this, okay? And then uh, you can share this in your PowerPoint presentation. So it, in the PowerPoint presentation, you can 
you can actually uh, scan the QR code there and it will direct you to the uh, questionnaire wherein you can participate. You can also ask questions to your teacher. Ayan. Oh, for example, in my case, so I was the one who made this. So in the account, on the VBOX account that I created, I will see your questions there. I can also see the uh, summary of your responses. Yeah. So if you can, uh, if you have your uh, cell phones right now, you can actually test this one if this works. Okay. So I think I I, I can uh, I can share the the link later on so that uh, you can also use this. So this is same as Mentimeter. Yeah. Oh, and Slido. Okay. So this is uh this is actually free. You can uh you can you can use this for your classes and. Uh, Hopefully, uh, it, it also uh, it is an additional to your uh, uh, to your applications or the applications that you use. Okay, now let's look at some other things. So, what are the other things that we can do for our students? Uh, it is also advice that you check on your students, especially during the time of pandemic. No, uh, you have to ask uh, what are they, uh, how are they feeling. Now you have to check on your students. Uh, one of the research that I found, um, this one, now Enhancing Teaching Effectiveness and Student Learning Outcomes by uh, Paulini. Uh, it, uh, it is mentioned here, research shows that students are more likely to interact with the instructors and be more academically successful if their instructors possess leadership skills and are sociable. Okay, not only being a good leader that you can facilitate the class. Okay. Not only a good facilitator in the class discussion, you should also be sociable. Uh, of course, they would admire that you are intelligent and uh, you're objective and supportive. But uh, being sociable and uh, being, uh, for example, uh, uh, considering their, uh, their situation is very helpful for students, especially right now that we are in a pandemic. And another thing that I would like to share with everybody is ito, yung sinasabi, you know, what is being said here in the slide. Faculty who encourage students to come to office hours or more or less to meet you know, online because we are on the context of a remote teaching right now, bring themselves to the classroom, share personal anecdotes or share what, uh, what's happening, what's going on in their, uh, in their lives, uh, current current events in their lives and demonstrate a genuine personal and academic interest in students report stronger student outcomes okay so being supportive so how how can you be supportive there are some teachers who actually send some emails to their students uh, saying uh, how are you uh, if there's uh, a concern uh, please feel free to tell me or just uh, if you want to talk about anything you you can actually uh, talk uh, talk uh, or share the, those things with me, uh, and especially if you were assigned to an advisory class, there, so that that would be very helpful. So let us uh, support them not only in terms of their academic needs, of course, uh, their their emotional needs and stability is very important as of now. Okay, so that's that's uh, that's another thing or another consideration that uh, I would like to uh, to share with you. Now, uh, let's proceed to the next figure. I want you to answer this question. How many bars do you see? Can you type it now in the chat box? Three. How many? Four. Three. Oh, seven. <laughs> so three plus four. <laughs> three plus four. I saw that seven. Okay, three. Four and seven. Those are the predominant numbers. Last five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Thank you very much for your participation. So I cannot call your names individually because, of course, in the interest of time, right? So when you uh, face with this kind of situation, this is another optical illusion. And I would say that uh, when you were asked, how many bars are there? It actually doesn't matter and uh, you don't have to worry because it's not only who got confused uh, because of this uh, figure. It is actually a test of perception, right? For some people, they would argue that uh, when you look at the edges, you can actually see four bars. That indicates that there are four bars. When you look at the sides, uh, somehow it's really visible no, to most of us. Uh, there are uh, three bars in the, in the picture because uh, it depends on... How you look at it and at the same time who is looking no you might experience as more just like six and nine ayan, according to ma'am abigail uh, mejia so thank you very much ma'am so actually 
that's the same story with six and nine. 